with that. Hi, Hi Elmer. Welcome. Hey, how are you? So let's start with uh, where did Dan go? Dan, the floor Over is yours. Here. That's okay. right. I and mean, it's hard to keep track of all these little squares, yeah. right? <laughs> so I'm Dan Susi. I've had some of you in class. I'm a, a professor of philosophy here at the Mount, and I'm also the chair of the Commonwealth Honors Program. And this is the state honors program. It's the program that all the different state colleges um, take part in, and it's really housed at the level of the state. It's the Massachusetts honors program. So it's, a, it's the same program that you would find at UMass, that you'd find at Fitchburg State or Westfield State. They're all chapters of this honors program. And the way it works is that in order to gain admission to our program, you have to have a 3.3 GPA and you have to have a recommendation from, we say two faculty members, but I'm usually okay with one. Uh, so if you have the 3.3 and you want to join, I advise you to talk to one of your faculty members that you think would be a good recommendation, write you a good recommendation, have them email me. I don't actually need a very long letter or anything, but just a quick few sentences. Uh, I'll, I'll choose uh, Ryan because uh, I see him, his picture's right underneath mine. So, you know, maybe the a professor would say, maybe it would be uh, Elmer, you know, and Elmer would say, send me an email and say, Ryan would be a great candidate for the Commonwealth Honors Program. And then I will, you know, audit Ryan's academic record and as long as he has a 3.3, I'll ad admit him into the program. And so once you're in the Commonwealth Honors Program, what does that mean? What kind of benefits and what do you have to do to stay in the program? So let me talk quickly about the benefits. Uh, one of the benefits is that when, and this one's not too, too great now since we're off campus, but when you are on campus and you belong to this honors program, you have access to a, a room, an honors room which is only for honor students. It has computers, it has a table, it's like a quiet study area, but we also use it for social events. So sometimes we'll have a speaker. Uh, last semester, we had a speaker uh, talk about the Salem witch trials on October. So sometimes we have speakers in the Commonwealth Honors Program. Uh, I may give a talk this semester. Semester. Sometimes it's a, a faculty member, uh, sometimes it's a, a professional from outside of our college, and they'll come and talk about things. The other another benefit of the program, not only do you get to attend these social functions, and not only do you get to uh, use the room, but when you graduate, you're graduated with distinction. So you'll actually have, you'll notice the Commonwealth Honors students, they all have like a, a yellow scarf uh, when they graduate, and their names are called first at commencement. Uh, they are actually, their names are read before any other students in the whole college. Uh, so if you're in this honor society, you actually sit up in front at commencement and you have a, a special scarf that designates you're part of this um, program. You also will have all sorts of opportunities upon graduation. Uh, as I mentioned, all of the public colleges in Massachusetts belong to the same honor society. And once you transfer, if you decide to transfer to a state program, you'll have to inform the equivalent on the other campus to myself, their coordinator. So you have to go to the coordinator at Fitchburg State or the coordinator at UMass Amherst and tell them that you were in the Commonwealth Honors Program or write them an email. And you actually are at the top of the list to be admitted to their Commonwealth Honors Program. And they actually give special, special um, privilege to community college students. You actually are on a list that's higher than four-year transfers. And depending upon what campus, this could mean an awful lot. Uh, for example, at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, our flagship state university, the Commonwealth Honors Program has their own dorm. It's a lot more than I can offer you here at little MWCC. But if you go to UMass Amherst and you transfer into the Commonwealth Honors Program, 
um, you'll be able to even have specialized dorms where you'll live around other honors students. It's actually one of their newest and best dorms. So there's a lot of benefit to being in this program upon transfer. And also it makes transfer much easier. Almost all of our students in the Commonwealth Honors Program transfer to where they wanna go, whether it be at a state college or a private college. Um, I have a student right now working in environmental ethics at Clark University. I have one getting their doctorate at UMass. Uh, I've sent students to Harvard. So we, we've had a really good track record of students in our honors program going on to really wonderful opportunities upon graduating the two-year degree. So you get access to the room, you get individual attention from your professors, uh, you get really great transfer opportunities. And the last semester you are a student, your tuition is waived at the college. And I need to make this very clear because oftentimes students hear this and there's sometimes a little bit of a, a confusion. Your tuition is waived, not your fees. <laughs> so so there's, you know, when you look at your bill, there's a big difference. I mean, there's a difference between tuition and fees. So you won't be able to go to um, college free your last semester, but we'll save you probably hundreds um, depending upon how many classes you're taking. So we'll save you some money too, if you're in this program. Um, what you have to do is when you're in your last semester, you have to remember to contact me so we do the paperwork. Sometimes students forget to do that. It doesn't happen automatically. You have to make sure that, oh, is there a, a question? I can't, I can't hear you. Maybe it's not far me. Maybe it's just background noise. I don't know. Um, you I think can it's type background in. there. Okay. So what, how do you stay in the program and what's required of you? Well, you have to maintain your 3.3. If you drop below a 3.3 cumulative GPA, you go on probation for a semester and hopefully you can get it back up. But if you don't maintain a 3.3 throughout your college career, uh, you can't stay in the program. You also are required to complete four honors level classes. We offer two classes that are um, designated as honors classes regularly. One of them is a section of English 102. The other is an honors research seminar where you get two teachers. And it's a interdisciplinary course. The one we're offering right now, it's taught by myself and Heather Kahn, and it's in environmental ethics. Going forward, a very special benefit of our program is that the next research seminar, the ones that you, the one that you would join if you join the program um, now or in, in the near future is the next research seminar we have on the books, not only is on um, myth and physical geography of Iceland, we're actually planning to allow students to travel to Iceland for part of this research seminar. And the professors of this class will be Michelle Valois and Heather Kahn. And I'm gonna try really hard to be a chaperone because I wanna go to Iceland. But anyway, <laughs> right? So that's another um, really great opportunity with this program is that we're going to have a class um, where your tuition and your, your fees can be used to help you travel. It can go, go towards the expenses. Um, not, and what, we're going to try to start doing fundraising for this early too. So if you join the program and you think you're gonna to wanna to take this class, let me know, because we wanna make sure that you can go and it's not too much of a financial burden for you if, if you really wanna go. So another, so you have to take four honors classes. So it could be that English class or that other class I just talked about. The other two classes can be what we call, um, you take a class you're in. And what we do is we have you do an extra project with a teacher and it might be a, a, a long PowerPoint or a long paper and it will take your course that you're enrolled in and we'll put an H on it when we, when we work with your transcript and we'll make that a designated honors class. So long story short is when we're looking at you at graduation time, we're looking at your transcript, there has to be four H's. And there's a couple of different possibilities that you can get those H's on your transcripts. You can either take the English course and the honors seminar and two honors components, or you could even take four honors components and we could supplement those as honors courses 
say you're in physics and engineering and you don't think you can take any extra classes because that course of study is really chock full, we'll find a way for you to be in this honors program. So if you're interested in doing it, I, I recommend that you reach out to me. Um, any, I don't know, do you want to open up for questions? I don't know, or not. I don't know what the format is here. Or just email We're me. pretty questions. flexible. If people have questions, they're welcome to ask them now, or we'll also have some time at the end uh, for people to pose questions if something comes up during the, during the seminar. It, it's a lot of information I know that's coming at you quickly. We have everything on our web page too. And what I'll do is I'll put it in the chat. So if you're not sure about the things I've said, you can always just click the link and that will explain things too. But if there's any questions right now, um, I can answer them or we can go on to another speaker. Any immediate questions for Professor Susi? Oh, I see some. Well, so Paige, the thing about the honors program is I will admit students really close, but what I would do in your case is I would have to evaluate your transcript and see if it's really possible for you to complete the program. If it's your last semester, it seems like it'd be an awful lot of work. Um, so we like it best if students kind of, the ideal time to enter would be like your second semester or first semester. But I will accept late, late students, you know, late career students that are nearing graduation, if upon, you know, us talking and, and figuring out if you could possibly finish the program in time. So if you're interested and you're close to graduating, send me an email and we'll set up a Zoom one-to-one -one and we'll figure out whether or not it makes sense for you to apply to the program. It's the Commonwealth Honors Program. And I'm gonna put, I got a um, little bit of a Luddite, give me a minute here. I gotta get the, I'll get the link to the page and then I'll put it in our chat. Perfect. Thanks, Dan. Let's, uh, and we can move on to the next speaker while you're doing that. So thank mm -hmm. you for that. Um, all right, our next speaker is from Alpha, Beta, Gamma um, and it's Professor Eubanks from the business department. All right, hello everybody. Hope you can hear me okay. Um, so uh, Alpha Beta Gamma was founded back in the 70s, uh, 1970 to be exact. Um, it was founded by uh, a group of professors, business professors, to kind of give an opportunity for business students to advance and to have scholarship and, and the like. So we have a chapter here at the Mount of uh, the AB, uh, it's called Alpha Beta Gamma uh, Club. And we basically, to admit you, you have to have a 3.0. So you probably have received a couple of emails already inviting you to be a member. We'll probably send out another one again. Uh, but at the Mount, uh, if, you, uh, if you can um, maintain a 3.0 GPA, we do an induction ceremony at the end of the semester, of the year, and uh, induct people who join. The, the fee is about $50. Um, and you, uh, when you graduate, you actually get to purchase a stall that you can march with. I mean, we didn't get to do it this last year just due to the pandemic, uh, but it's kind of cool. You, you, you march with a, with a stall that says ABG on it. You get that on your, on your transcript and you also have uh, several opportunities to network. It's also a good opportunity for jobs. Um, Students that, that are part of Alpha Beta Gamma get access to the Alpha Beta Gamma website. And there's a lot of job opportunities there as well. And if you have that on your, on your transcript, uh, it also helps and, and network with other people that are in the, in the club and around the nation. There's about, I think, five or six colleges that are members uh, that you can network with as well. Um, actually, a few students have gotten um, uh, scholarships from them as well. Uh, so you can apply for a scholarship. I think their, their low one is about $500. But in some cases, some people have gotten full, a full scholarship just for applying. Not a lot of people think of applying. So um, I believe uh, Professor Nick uh, Cochran did get a scholarship from them for a full ride. Um, uh, so he was a member of ABG as well back in, back in the day when he was going to school. Uh, so uh, a good example of somebody that actually benefited from from being a member of AVG. 
so uh so that's probably kind of the nutshell of what what we do what the club is about it's about a hundred thousand members so that means you have a big networking field when you graduate um to reach out to people and find out you know network with them and find out what jobs they might have available and who they know in the industry in the business world and so that's that's basically the the rundown of it um we have on the mount uh, you can go visit the clubs and organizations page and you can sign up there as well so those who have 3.0 or above and then um actually for you know to get inducted you'd have to have the 50 dollars, and then every year uh, we have elections and we have a president, vice president, treasurer, all those people to participate in the club and run the club for the year. So it's you, usually the first semester you have to show us the 3.0 and then after that you can join and you, you'll be around for at least two, you know, the following year uh, as part of the club. We've done several activities in the past. We've gone to uh, dinners, uh, events, different things. We did a fundraiser this past year. Um, we were supposed to bring... Um, uh, we're trying to bring uh, for the uh, character breakfast. I was trying to bring my cousin, who is the Red Ranger, um, but due to the pandemic, we weren't able to get him to come. So that was kind of uh, a, a fun process. He said he would, he would. So hopefully, we can you know plan it for another time that we can actually do the character breakfast. That was a joint collaboration that we did to raise money uh, with the character breakfast uh, um, group as well. So that, in a nutshell, and you know, two second. Overview tells you a little bit about what ABG is about. Hopefully that gives you a little, little sense of what we do. Any questions? Elmer, do you invite eligible students or do students just check themselves and sign them? So we send an invitation out to the students. So I get a list every semester of students that qualify that have met the, the 3.0 and we send them an invitation. So we'll be sending one out soon for people as well. But if you know you have a 3.0 already, you just, you can also, you know, invite yourself into the uh, to be part of the club and we'll um, we'll verify you and then uh, accept you so <laughs> so that's another way of doing it but we should be we'll I should be sending out in a couple maybe a week or so we'll be sending out invites again for people that had 3.0 in the fall thank you any questions for right. professor Eubanks Everyone's quiet today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the questions will come afterwards. All right. <laughs> well, awesome. You can email me and ask. Um, so Santiago asked how to join. So basically, um, we'll be you, you can join the, the, on the iConnect uh, for now if you have a 3.0. And then we'll be sending out invitations to, to join as well. Alana, Alana asks if you can join more than one organization because she's eligible for multiple. Yes, you can join multiple organizations. You just need to meet the requirements for each one separately. Any other questions? All right. All right, next up we have Delta Alpha Phi, which uh, we have Amy Labarge here to talk about that one. Hi everyone. I'm gonna try to share my screen here. Um, can everybody see that? Yes. Yes, perfect. I'm Amy Labarge. I'm the coordinator of disability support services here at the college. I'm also the uh, one of the co-advisors of Delta Alpha Pi, um, which is our academic honor society that's founded to recognize high achieving students with disabilities who are attending colleges across the United States. So it's a national honor society. And right now there's over 170 institutions that have a chapter on their campus. Um, it was established in 2004 in Pennsylvania um, to recognize students with disabilities. And the purpose, I'm gonna go through some of the slides, was um, sometimes because of negative stereotyping associated with disabilities, students have been reluctant to identify themselves. So this Honor Society presents an opportunity to change that perception by recognizing our students for disabilities for their academic accomplishments. And then it helps to develop leadership skills, advocacy skills, and things like that. This is our chapter on our campus. It's called Epsilon Theta. It was established in 2017 to recognize our students at MWCC uh, for their achievements. And um, our chapter members assist in promoting disability awareness um, and pride at MWCC. 
Um, we are one of only nine colleges and universities in Massachusetts to have a chapter. So we're real excited about that. Here, as I said, I'm an advisor and Ann Reynolds is a co-advisor. She couldn't be here today on the call, but I know uh, Paige is on the call and she's one of our co-presidents uh, who helped with the um, formatting of these slides today. And uh, Jen, and we have a secretary and a treasurer and a vice president. Uh, so there's opportunities to uh, hold officer positions like um, Alpha Beta Gamma. Uh, we run it as a club as well. So anybody can participate, um, but in order to be a member, I'm gonna go through the criteria in a minute. So the three letters, so you might see it around campus as DAPI, D-A-P-I. So the D is for Delta, which is for disability, um, which in the Greek letters, it forms a triangle, which is a symbol of strength. And our leaders are, we like to say our, our students are strong. They're strong leaders across campus. They serve as mentors and role models for our other students. And then the A, alpha, stands for achievement, because um, we like to say the academic achievement must come first, and it also stands for advocacy. Um, students learn self-advocacy skills and um, help one another and support one another um, and become more aware uh, across campus and promoting uh, disability awareness and pride. And P is, uh, stands for pride because uh, we like our students to be proud. They should be proud of their accomplishments, um, not just as a student with a disability, but as, as a um, MWCC community college student. And uh, PI is also um, for the math symbol. So it starts as a basis. We learned it in elementary school as a part of formulas and it's a part of a symbol for education. So our members, like um, we encourage them to educate others about universal design and learning and disability issues um, and such. So here is our criteria. First of all, it's completely free, uh, which students don't realize a lot of times. So I send out an email invitation at the beginning of the semester. I uh, get a list of those students that meet the criteria and then they're invited by email to become a member. Um, I send the email out several times uh, until um, we hear from students that are interested. Um, as I said before, anybody can attend a meeting, but the criteria to become a member of Delta Alpha Pi, you must present with a documented disability and work with one of the members of disability services team uh, or self-identify as an individual with a disability and then demonstrate an issue and in, um, an interest in disability issues students have to have the GPA of 3.1 or higher and have completed uh, 24 college level credits. And he has a whole bunch of benefits. Um, like the other honor societies, um, you students can join a community of like-minded students with disabilities who are high achievers and who support one another. Um, we run meetings in the fall and the spring. Last year, due to the pandemic, we ran meetings all throughout the summer. So we run meetings via Zoom bi-weekly, and it was a great way. Students wanted those meetings all through the summer to be able to support one another. Students also can develop leadership skills by holding an office. As I said, advocacy skills. Um, they can learn how to plan and implement programming to educate others about disability issues. Uh, we like to have fun, so we try to create new friendships and participate in fun activities and events. And um, like some of the other honor societies, you can wear honor cords at graduation. Those are also free um, and you have the opportunity to apply for a scholarship and uh, a great bonus and perk is uh, it looks great on a resume or a transfer application because you're a member of an honor society. Some of the activities we've um, held in the past on campus and virtually. So we've sponsored films um, in conjunction with student life that were related to disability uh, and also hosted speakers. We ran an autism awareness event. Uh, we went out and spoke to uh, special education classes at local high schools to talk to them about what it's like to be at college as a student with a disability and how it's different uh, from high school to college. We've also done some fundraising with raffles and bake sales to support agencies. And each spring we have our annual initiation ceremony. 
So that's like our induction ceremony where you officially become a member. Uh, we've done rock painting, online trivia, some field trips to the beach and many more fun things. And as I said before, our meetings are held bi-weekly uh, via Zoom. So anybody can come into a meeting and participate. You need to have that meet that criteria to be a member. But um, the students that are interested and invited receive the Zoom email link. But if you want to check out a meeting, um, you can either email myself or Anne, and we can send you the Zoom link. The next meeting will be held um, Wednesday, March 3rd from 1230 to 130. And that is the National Honor Society website, Delta Alpha Pi Honor Society org. Does anybody have any questions? Paige, do you have anything to share? Uh, yeah, I think it I think it's all an awesome opportunity for anyone who has a disability and wants to inspire and encourage others. And if we were to be able to do uh, more outreach towards the kids transitioning from high school to college, that would be awesome because we can just inspire a ton of people and let them know that you can achieve more than what you necessarily think you can. Does anybody else have questions about Delta Alpha Pi? I'm gonna put my email address in the chat and my contact info. We encourage you to check us out. Thank you. Thank you, Amy, we appreciate that. Next up we have Phi Theta Kappa and I believe we have Fagan Forehan here to chat about that society. Welcome Fagan. Thank you and good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Some everybody's some muted <laughs> <laughs> no but everybody seems to be awake and with it i know mondays can be a little bit tricky and you know getting my own kids engaged in school again after a week off last week was quite the challenge this morning so you know for those of you that are parents i feel you today for sure so phi theta kappa is an international honor society that is specifically for community college students and it's been in existence since the early 1900s, officially certified in 1923 by the American Association of Community Colleges. So this thing's pretty old, about 100 years old. In order to be eligible, you have to have a 3.3 GPA and have completed 12 credit credits in residency. And what they mean by that is that your developmental ed credits don't count towards that 3.3, which is sometimes good, right? Because sometimes those classes can be tricky. Um, and any pass fail classes don't count toward that 12 credit requirement as well. So every semester we work with IT to run a report for all students that meet those eligibility requirements. And you can be full-time or part-time, dual enrollment or traditional, or non-traditional. So all students qualify as long as you hit those, those two pieces. And then based on that report, we feed it into the Phi Theta Kappa International database that we work with and they generate invitations. And that happens twice a year, typically in October and at the end of February. So we just submitted our report to Phi Theta Kappa last week. So I anticipate invitations to start going out sometime this week. And it's an electronic based invitation and I get questions every single year like, hey, is this legit? Is this a real thing? Yes, it's legit. Yes, it's a real thing. We have a very active local chapter. Many thanks to Paige, who is just a powerhouse of a woman. Um, she is our president for Phi Theta Kappa this year. And we've always had a, a fairly active local chapter. I anticipated in this current circumstance, it would be much harder to do, but man, Paige, you have really absolutely made sure that we are still at the forefront in helping to support our community. Um, so Phi Theta Kappa, our local cha chapter is very focused on serving our community as well as the achievements, uh, your academic achievements. And so we tend to focus each year on a particular service 
project or area that we would like to target. And that's where the character breakfast that Elmer referenced uh, earlier comes in. We developed the character breakfast, I think about five years ago, as a way to be able to raise funds for our local food pantries. It might've even been longer than that. Kathy, you were, I think, still a student back then, right? Um, and so it was really a, a way to, to engage our local families, our students with kids, and to open up the college community to our greater community and support our local food pantries that way. We had realized that the can drives were only getting you so many cans. And let's be frank, how many cans of like beans and you know the stuff that you don't want in your cabinet could really be donated. What they need is cash. What our local food pantries need is cash to be able to appropriately support folks, make sure that they can get ingredients to make things and not just you know stuff that's being discarded from somebody else's cabinet. And so over the past few years, we typically raise about $2,000 for our local food pantries through that. And so that's a huge initiative and definitely helps to impart uh, project coordination skills, project planning skills, communication and outreach. And this year we're not able to do that, but Paige has devised some really tremendous projects for us to, to engage the chapter on as well. Um, Scholarships. Paige, anything you want to add to that piece before I move on to scholarships? Uh, <laughs> I think that uh, serving the community is definitely our forefront. And I would love to get the character breakfast back into play, even if we can do it virtually. Um, we also do projects like the college project, um, which is focused on helping our immediate um, community as a college. And then we also do something called an honors in action project, which is a larger scope. Um, and that is to help the uh, potentially, if you want to go this large uh, national and international community. Um, the Phi Theta Kappa is active in 12 other countries outside of the United States as well. Thank you, Paige. So our chapter is very active for certain, um, but it is not a circumstance where you have to commit every single week to meetings. It is as active or as hands off as you need it to be. Because once you have achieved those benchmarks of being able to be accepted into the Honor Society, you have achieved those benchmarks. Um, and so there are, definite, there are definitely additional accolades, additional uh, resume building things that you can do as part of the Honor Society, like Paige just mentioned, but it's not a requirement. So scholarships, there are, I even had the number here. I wanna say, because I don't wanna get it right, get it wrong. Over $37 million in scholarships that are set aside for PTK members every single year. $37 million and PTK are the only ones that can qualify. So through the PTK portal, there is the opportunity to see all those different scholarships. And there are national scholarships that you can apply for. And then there are individual based scholarships at transfer institutions because they know, our four-year institutions know that you've been successful in a community college and they wanna draw you in. So yesterday I got an email from somebody in Kentucky saying, hey, we've got a full, a full tuition, not the fees, but full tuition for any of your members. I haven't had any members asking about Kentucky this year. So that'll go into the file. But in general, there's, there's a clickable map that you, you can actually search by region and say, okay, I really wanna go to Rhode Island. It's you know five degrees warmer there whatever your reason may be, and you can click through Rhode Island and see where those scholarships may be. They are looking for Phi Theta Kappa members to transfer to four-year institutions. So it's both publics and privates that can provide those types of scholarships. And then, as I mentioned, there's also the, the national and international scholarships where you build one application through the system and you're able to use that application to apply individually to different scholarships for PTK members as well and not enough students use it. So it's one of the biggest benefits of being a PTK member and not enough students actually go in and, and use the scholarship pieces. So there is money that goes unclaimed nationally every single year. So I highly, highly recommend it. There is an entry uh, fee. It's, I think it's about $80 this year. Does that sound right to you, Paige? 
I think it's about $80 this year. The bulk of that goes to Phi Theta Kappa International, but $10 comes back to our local chapter. And we use that funding to support students who cannot fund their own entrance um, fee. And we provide up to four scholarships for students who can't cover that themselves by our own local chapter. And that's something we've been doing for about 10 years. And so if you can't raise the funds, let Paige know, let me know, and we would be more than happy to, you know, put you, to let you know what that process looks like. And it's a really simple process. It's like, send us an email as to why you're be eligible and tell us that you'll commit to being part of our local chapter. We meet every other week. Um, Paige, I don't know if we've set the meeting schedule for this semester yet. Uh, we have. Um, the first meeting, I believe, because of all the cancellations and stuff, uh, is going to be on March 2nd. Um, we've kind of had a special meeting in between there. We throw out special meetings every now and then that aren't within the regular bi-weekly meetings to try and achieve our projects in between because there's it's uh, hard to do in the short period that we have. And when we keep, keep getting hit by snow days for our regular meetings too. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so very much like, like um, Amy was just saying, our meetings are open. We run like a club. And so anyone can come to our meetings. But in order to be a member, you have to have attained the 3.3 and have those 12 credits completed and get an invitation and accept that. Are there any questions about Phi Theta Kappa? For people who aren't monitoring the chat, somebody, uh, Allison asked if people are still allowed to join if they missed the first special meeting and Paige, I believe said absolutely. So. We will have people joining all the way, almost through graduation uh, because it's, it's very much whenever you decide to click on that link in your invitation. There is graduation regalia available for purchase. And even last year, we had students still purchase the graduation regalia so they could use it for pictures and things like that. Uh, Fagan, I don't know if you know, but this year we achieved the REACH reward, which is super exciting. Uh, and because we achieved the REACH reward, uh, if I'm correct, our chapter will receive the free stoles. Four of them. Four of them. Okay. Four of them, yep. And we always have extra sets available too for students who just, you know, don't want to purchase them, can't afford to purchase them, whatever it may be, just for a loan. And then we take them back and we reuse them. Any questions for Fagan about PTK, Phi Theta Kappa? Um, I also wanted to throw in uh, for the scholarships. Uh, they actually, so once you sign up for the PTK, uh, you are PTK for life. And because of that, the scholarships are not just for associates or bachelors. They actually go further into the master's degree as well. Good point. Thank you, Paige. Awesome. All right. If any other questions come up, please put them in the chat and we can follow up with them. Oh, Allison asks, yes, is that only a one-time fee? fee? A one time only fee. And I believe that's true for all of the honors programs. I, you know, I know, uh, Amy, there's no fee for the Delta Alpha Pi. ABG, I believe, just a one time fee, right, Elmer? Yes, one time fee. Okay, perfect. No fee for the Commonwealth. Yeah. <laughs> so, Diana asked, what time are the meetings for PTK? That's it. And if I want to join someday. I just have to pay that and in one payment or it could be in different payments or for, way. for ABG for be member of the of this. Okay. Are you talking about ETK Santiago or Alpha Beta Gamma or Phi Theta Kappa? Oh, it's, it's different, it's three difference, right? Right, right. And each one, the price uh, bar, bar, bar is different. The, the price is different for each. Right, each one. each one is different, yeah. 
And if I want uh, to get more information, uh, can I email you or somebody? Exacto. Okay. Do you speak Spanish too? Sí, la verdad hablo más español que inglés. Por ahora estoy aprendiendo inglés. Ok, chévere. Mándame un mensaje y te, te, te explico más. Ok. ¿Tienes, te, te mando mi contacto. Estoy por aquí en el, en el chat. Eh, gonna, eh, give you... En el chat. I'll send it in the chat. Mm -hmm. My email. Let's see if I can find you. <laughs> Santiago. I'll just post it to everybody. I can't, I can't find either, but it's... Um... In the chat, there was also a question about the timing for the meetings and PDK meetings are bi-weekly, 11 a.m. The next one is Tuesday on March 2nd at 11 a.m. Um, let me see I what just... ours... I sent, the, I sent it there. All right, thanks, Elmer. I just want to be mindful of time um, and I want to make sure our last presenter has some time to talk about Sigma Alpha Phi. Um, and we have Kathy Matson to chat a little bit about that. Hi, everybody. Uh, save the best for last, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, anyway, so I am the assistant director of student life. Many of you probably already know me. <clears throat> you probably get lots of emails from me. Um, I am also the co-advisor of the National Society of Leadership and Success. Um, I co-lead, I co-advise with, um, our senior assistant dean of students, um, our senior dean of students, Jason Zaleski. Um, and this is uh, different than the honor societies. It's actually a leadership society. Um, <clears throat> and it, it is somewhat similar to the Commonwealth Honors Program in that when you join, um, you actually have some, some requirements you have to fulfill once you join. Um, you do have to have a 2.5 GPA um, and 15 credits before you receive an invitation and you would receive that right directly from the National Society of Leadership and Success. Um, so, and again, like um, Fagan said, sometimes we get people saying, is this a real thing? Yes, it is a real thing. Those invites went out about a week or so ago. Um, so you will receive it directly from them. But then once you join, um, there are some requirements um, that you need to fulfill. You need to watch some speaker broadcasts, either live or recorded ones, and then do some um, group networking activities. Um, it, it takes about 12 hours worth of, of time to complete those activities and then once you complete those then you become an inducted member and you're you then you receive um your um your packet from the organization which includes i think a t-shirt and um a pin and a few other things um and similar to the honor societies they do have um lots of scholarship opportunities networking opportunities um, our chapter at Mount Wachusett um, has been here since January of 2014. Um, I will tell you, I was the first member. I was a student back then. I graduated in um, May of 2014, and I was the first member of NSLS on campus. We are a completely online chapter, which um, pre-COVID meant that we were pretty much everyone just kind of did their own thing um, with the chapter and you might connect with people on campus to do your networking portion. Um, because of COVID, um, Jason Zlosky and I, we have been working um, and a little behind the times on this, but we've been working to try and, and create um, a more um, connected group. We do have um, an organization on Involve Mount, which um, that's the uh, platform for all the groups and clubs, which is where all of the honor societies also reside. Um, and if you are currently uh, a member of NSLS, um, you've probably been receiving an invitation from me to join that organization on Involve Mount. Um, I've been sending those out daily as I get the um, the membership report as students register um, and, and sign up for National Society of Leadership and Success. Um, so one of the things that we are looking to do on May, or March 5th, um, we're actually gonna do kind of a meet and greet. So students that are all part of the organization have an opportunity to get together virtually and connect with each other and maybe um, 
make those connections so that when they're doing their their networking portion of the requirements, they, they have those connections already built. Um, one of the, the great things with NSLS is the speakers that they offer. Um, you know, the each week, I believe it is at seven o'clock on Tuesday evenings, they offer a national speaker. Um, tomorrow is Dr. Bernice King, Dr. Um, Martin Luther King Jr.'s granddaughter. Um, now that's somebody that we could never bring to campus, even virtually to speak, um, but members of NSLS get to watch those for free. Um, you're able to pose questions, um, whether live or you can watch the, the recordings later. Um, so that's, to me, that's one of the biggest um, opportunities with NSLS is to be able to hear these, these national and international speakers that you wouldn't normally have the opportunity to hear. Um, and again, the, um, uh, they like the honor societies, you know, like I said, they have the scholarships, they also have networking opportunities, they have opportunity for you to get some career counseling, um, meet people in various fields, job opportunities. So there's, there's lots of, of good benefits there. Um, it is a $95 fee and that is a one-time lifetime fee and you are a lifetime member. Um, like I said, I joined in January of 2014 and I can log in at any time, listen to any speaker, attend any event. When I went um, for my bachelor's, that school did not have a chapter, but if I wanted to, I could join their um, national online chapter. But then when I went on for my master's, that school had a chapter and I was able to transfer my membership right to that, organ right to that chapter. Um, so I could attend anything there as part of that chapter. Um, so yeah, if, like I said, if you, if you see the, um, email from, um, NSLS, it is a real thing <laughs> and, um, it is sponsored by the college. Um, and, you know, like I said, I, am also sending out those invites to join our involvement. I think we're up to 42 members on involvement, which last week, I think we had about 18. Um, so a lot of you have been accepting that invitation. So. Any questions? Any questions for Kathy or any general questions for any of our presenters today? Um, so I see somebody asked if they can still join the, the meeting tomorrow. You do have to be registered on, you have to join um, NSLS in order to access the speaker tomorrow. Um, that's one of their the benefits. That's why like I can't, offer those speaker um, opportunities to the general population at Mount Wachusett. You have to be a member of NSLS in order to see those. And I'll put my contact info in the chat also if anybody has any further questions. Allison asked, is there a specific MWCC staff member we can contact? And Allison, you'd contact Kathy. She's putting her email in the chat box right now. Any other questions? Uh, the, uh, Kathy, there's a question if the uh, videos are recorded, the presentations are recorded so students can join, uh, watch them after they join up? Yes, all of those um, sessions are recorded, but again, you do have to, as long as you're a member, you can go in and watch them anytime. So if you can't attend the time that they, that they are happening live and that's when you actually doing um, the work to to be inducted you can go back and watch those record previous recordings or you can attend the live ones any last questions Awesome. Well, I want, just want to take a second to thank our five presenters who came and, and chatted with us today about their programs. We really appreciate your time. I think all of them have put their email addresses in the chat box. Um, so if you want to save them, make sure to go copy them because that information gets erased once the, the chat room closes. You can also, for whatever reason, if you need to contact them, reach out to us and we're more than happy to help you connect with the program that you're interested in. Um, all of these programs are great. Um, 
they and really you know you get what you put into them um having them on your resume is a great resume builder it automatically identifies you as somebody who's reached a certain benchmark when employers are looking at resumes and if you take on leadership positions as you know secretaries or treasurers or presidents um it gives you some of those that skill building opportunity before you actually go out and and get that real life job experience um I know a few people have have mentioned you know students reaching out and asking whether the program is legit and that's a great thing to do when you receive these invitations the mount has these four honor societies um alpha beta gamma delta alpha pi phi theta kappa and sigma alpha pi in a, in addition to the honors programs but there are numerous honor societies that exist in the country um and very often they will do cold calls and emails to reach out to students to try to get them to join um they you know you should always do your due research before you join anything uh, most of them do have an entry fee that you have to pay to join up and you want to make sure that you uh, before you sign up for something you understand the benefits of what you're getting uh, before you sign up for something that the, that's not through the college awesome well thank you all for coming today uh um, the next vision seminar is uh going to be on um uh, March 10th and 15th most students here probably won't need it it's academic cpr just in case you're running into trouble with your classes how to get it fixed early enough in the semester and then over spring break on March 16th we have our career conference which is all online this year uh we have exciting speakers i think the the, the owner of deans beans is going to do our keynote um so we're very excited about that watch your email for more information and to sign up for that uh when you have a chance thank you all for coming have a great afternoon thank you Hi folks, do you have any questions? Elmer, I know you don't have any questions, but <laughs>